I've got a big box with me and I will need it where I'll be going and don't worry it will all make sense later so keep watching If you have been following my Facebook page, then you would know that I visited a couple of nurseries a few weeks ago. And this is only the first of many videos that I'll be producing, which features various nurseries around in Victoria. In this episode, I had the pleasure of visiting Marie of MLD Succulents. Her nursery is located in Sky, Victoria, which is a suburb to the southeast of Melbourne. <music> Yes, I'm going on a road trip and seeing that I have a box with me, you probably know what it means. So let's get right to it. I have to make sure that the garage is closed. The place I'm going to is about an hour or a bit over an hour away and I'm actually going to visit a friend who happens to own a succulent nursery so this is quite exciting unfortunately my fuel gauge is reporting that it's below one fourth so for a trip this long I think I might have to do a pit stop I've got a long trip ahead of me so it's a good idea to refuel now Alright, I'm at half tank again This should be more than enough to take me there and back Now all I have to do is to set my GPS Well actually I'm just using Google Maps So once having done that And there I'm all set to go in 800 meters, use the left two lanes to take the M1 Westgate Freeway exit towards Westgate Bridge City. Continue on M1 for 13 kilometers. on State Route 20 for one and a half kilometers. I'm finally here. So I'm finally at Marie's place. As you can see, she has a, she has a landscape here with all of her plants. Please do not enter the growing area. <laughs> the letters MLD in MLD succulents come from her name and it stands for Maria Lourdes de la Rosa. Coincidentally, the letters are all Roman numerals and she finds this auspicious. If you're in Australia and you've been buying succulents online, then chances are you know Marie. She's one of the larger sellers here in Australia. And the thing that sets her apart from the other sellers is her trademark meticulous packaging. She's very known with how carefully she packs her plants, how well taken care of they are, how clean they are, how pristine. It's really hard to describe it, but simply put, her plants are delivered and taken care of so well that it feels like she just plucked them from the garden. That's how good she does her packaging. And if you've already ordered plants from her, I'm pretty sure you would agree with this. So in this video, I've gathered some insights about how she got into succulents, how she started her business, and the secret to her success she's of course her packaging. 
and that bit will come much later. So I'm going to start this story from the beginning and the best way to convey a story is to start the beginning. So let's talk about her origin story. Marie's obsession with succulents started all the way back in the Philippines. Her mom-in-law was into gardening as well and she collected orchids and bromeliads. They once drove a few hours out of Metro Manila to the city of Tagaytay to visit a few nurseries and get some plants. And that's when she saw her first Echeveria, Imbricata, and Gloca. Those were the beginnings of her collection. She bought a few and propagated them. And like any other succuholic, she just kept getting more. Every time her mom-in-law went to get plants, she would tag along. Some time later, she moved to Australia with her now ex-husband. She distinctly remembers that they went to Bunnings one day. And in case you don't know, Bunnings is one of the big box stores down here. Anyway, they were at Bunnings, right? She saw the succulent section from afar. And Bunnings typically has just a shelf or two dedicated to succulents. So it's not really big. However, the plants came with large tags containing plant information and care information you know, on the labels. So she took the time to read each and every one of them. So suffice it to say, she spent a lot of time reading them. It took so much time that her partner went out to have the car cleaned. And maybe about an hour or so later when he came back, she was still not done looking around. Marie just grabbed everything she liked and she recalls spending about $300. And at the time, that's worth a lot of money. The plants that she bought was all over the place, you know. She collected, she, she got euphorbias, echeverias, crassulas, sedums, the works. Of course, it had to come out of her own pocket because otherwise her ex-husband would not approve of it. It's $300, man. So as you can see, her origin story is very familiar and maybe, for most of us, relatable. It sounds like your typical succulent-obsessed person. She would check out every nursery that she could find and she would buy a few or not so few. And of course, this also extended to finding the right pots for her plants. So, mm, another spending. She was so consumed by the hobby that she would be thinking of the plants even at work. And during her breaks, she finds herself reading about succulents online, getting all of the information that she could get. Then she discovered eBay. She spent a lot of time and money on that website. She would work overtime and ask part of that money to be set aside for her succulent spending. During her breaks, she would head over to Bunnings and get more plants or go on eBay and just click, 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 place bids everywhere. This went on and on and on until one day, she started to run out of space to hide her plants. Things were starting to overflow. And it was at that point that her ex-husband started to wonder if she had so many plants or why she had so many plants. Sometimes he would ask her about when and where she got a specific plant and she would lie about it every time. Oh, someone gave this to me. Oh, it's a gift. Oh, it's a pressy. Oh, I got it from a swap. You name it, she probably said it already. She has also used a lot of friends' names to claim that the plants came from them. Oh, by the way, I have Marie's express permission to include that in the video. So, hi Marie. <laughs> Peace. The point here is, if you're obsessed, you'll find ways. It's a funny personal anecdote that she shares with her customers as well. Whenever some of them are thinking that they are maybe spending too much, they'll say, Oh, my partner will kill me. To which Marie would respond, Been there, done that. But then again, she thinks it is satisfying and she would also go on to say, Ask your partner, would they rather you go to the pub, have some drinks, maybe play pokies or gamble, or would they prefer you staying at home and playing with your plants? Right? A hundred percent of the time, they would choose the latter. She has a point. And it might even be cheaper than gambling. Unless your eBay account is out of control. <laughs> Later in life, when they separated, she took all of her plants with her. 
and it took all of three days or maybe more just to haul all of them. From then on, she went on and continued collecting as well as making her own bowl arrangements. Whenever she had some friends come over, she would proudly show off her creations and they would love it. Inspired by what they saw, they would commission her to create some bowls for them. And that's probably when she realized that she could make a living out of this. It started with a few pieces at a time, with things picking up eventually. At some point, word spread around the office that she was doing arrangements like these, that she got commissioned to create a whole lot for their office giveaways. She started experimenting with more varieties and collected even more. Sometime in 2011, she started selling on eBay, then sometime later, she also did it on Facebook. All right, now let's talk about the business. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, Marie is well known for her superb packaging. And so what that means is that she does most of her sales online. But before we talk about the packaging though, let's dive into the operations for a bit. Through the years of selling, she has streamlined her operations and developed a routine. She operates from home with her husband, her children, and their friends. Each one plays a specific role in the whole machinery. She starts listing her items for sale at Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And she does this on specific buy, swap, and sell groups on Facebook, or maybe even on eBay. Most of them get sold immediately, and they continue selling until they reach their cutoff, which is at 4 p.m. on Saturday. So they sell from Wednesday to Saturday. She creates invoices as each order comes in, and she sends them to the customer for payment. After the cutoff, she would mark all of the remaining listings as sold just, just to prevent overbookings. On Sunday, she would collate all of the orders and and for each order, she would create a pick list. It's like your grocery list or shopping list. So after lunch on a Sunday, they would start picking the plants, just put them together. She usually targets selling about 300 to 400 plants every week. Wow. To ensure freshness, the plants are uprooted, cleaned, and packed Monday mornings. After that, Marie and her husband would deliver the packages to the post office from Monday to Wednesday and they only send via express post. On Monday, she would only send all orders to Queensland. Then on Tuesday, she would send Queensland and New South Wales. And finally on Wednesday, just Victoria. This is to ensure that the packages do not sit at the post office over the weekend. An alternative to online shopping is by booking an appointment. And this is what I usually do. She accepts walk-in customers from Wednesday to Sunday. So, But other than the appointments, she also holds an open house once every season, usually during spring and autumn. And you would know because she would announce it on several pages. And in the open house, it's open to the public. So, you know, lots of people would come in, just look around and buy. I have been to a few of these and it's always fun. Marie prefers the walk-in appointments because that way she can have a one-on-one -on -one chat with the customer and she just enjoys talking about these plants. As, a, as someone who's obsessed with this hobby, I'm sure you can relate. Before we talk about packaging, let's just get pricing out of the way. As expected, pricing is based on the size so younger plants are cheaper than the, the bigger plants because the bigger ones usually have clumps or are composed of many plants so it just makes sense. The prices start at $4 with bulk options available. I can't recall exactly but something this big might go for 8 6 or 8 or maybe 6 to $10. Nah, I seem to have forgotten to include the prices in the video. But now that we're here, I might as well send you on a tour around the nursery.
the prices are fair and when she holds her sales events they're further discounted there is no minimum order and if you're ordering online postage is based on the size of the package so this is typically somewhere between 12 to 16 dollars i'm not sure it's just a guess before we finally get to the packaging there's one more story that i want to get out of the way i promise it will be worth the wait i got the idea from the succulent tag video a while back and i asked her a question and the question was have you ever lost a special or expensive plant and she said yes according to marie the most expensive plant that she lost was this Crashula Deceptor cluster. She bought it for over $400 on eBay. It's notable because it was her first Deceptor cluster ever. And at the same time, she also lost her first ever Crashula Roger Jones together with the Deceptor. Both were stolen from her during a private visit by a small group of buyers and they probably only bought about $50 worth plants or maybe even less. Things happened so quickly and she didn't even notice they were missing until after weeks later when she it was time for her to, to water the plants. She believes that the perpetrators have been to previous open house events because otherwise that's that's probably how they knew where to find them. So back then they might have been casing out the place. That's how they knew where her prized specimens were being kept. She was so devastated. This was a tipping point which motivated her to quit her day job and focus on this business full time. Besides, all her children are grown up, so she no longer has to sustain them. And at this point, she can pretty much do what she likes. The bit about the packaging is going to be so detailed, so... Let me just get the fluff out of the way first. And since I already shared with you that one story, I'll take advantage and plug my patreon so as always i'd like to take my patrons at patreon and of course special shout outs to oscarino julie seal and snap Kui. thank you for your support and for everyone else you can head over to patreon.com slash seriscapades just pledge anything you're comfortable with no obligation and you just watching my videos on youtube is enough support for me and finally let's talk packaging it's time for me to spill all of Mary's secrets, so that's why I, I'm really, I'm really close to the camera now because I don't want you to miss a thing. In fact, maybe you, you would want to come even closer so you could, so you could listen to everything I have to say here. Cause, cause from here I'll be spilling Marie's trade secrets, and her biggest secret is with how she prepares the packaging. So listen very closely, cause you would not hear it from anywhere else. Okay. So her secret is 